Hello and welcome to Cretaceous Cantina, where today we're having a look at the Mattel, Jurassic World, Dino Rivals, Savage Strike, Dimetrodon. Special thanks to my pal Nick, local Jurassic fan and collector who was nice enough to pick this up for me at Walmart. I haven't seen them for myself in person, so it was really cool to be able to add it to my collection. I was really excited to get it. Now looking at the packaging, you can see that it is basically the Dino Rivals aesthetic. It looks nice, it shows you that you can test out the action feature, try it before you buy it. At the back you can see a somewhat more detailed looking Dimetrodon. I don't know if it was originally going to be a little bit nicer looking, but it definitely looks a little bit more rich in detail. At the bottom you can see other items available in the Savage Strike assortment. You also get a collector card and you have Jurassic Facts app compatibility. If you're looking for the UPC, well there it is right there. All right, we're gonna take a moment and get the Dimetrodon unboxed when we come back. We'll take a closer look. All right, so here's the Dimetrodon out of the packaging. I think this is one of those species that many collectors were very looking forward to, especially since it was one of the initial releases in the Kenner Jurassic Park line all the way back in 1993. So it's really nice that we have a brand new one in 2019 as part of Mattel's Jurassic World toy line. The Dimetrodon is a very interesting species. It's not a dinosaur, it's actually a synapsid. It's more closely related to modern day mammals than it is to dinosaurs. So it's kind of one of those unique species that uh, we always associate with being a dinosaur, but it's not really a dinosaur. In any case, I'm happy to have it. Um, so let's gonna take a close up look here at the Dimetrodon. And that head sculpt is looking very nice. Uh, the entire thing actually looks quite nice. Now. It does look somewhat cartoony. This is something we've seen with some of the smaller dinosaurs in the Jurassic World toy line. Um, it, it does have a little bit of a cartoony look about it, um, but it's not all that bad. I mean, it, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of things like the Proceratosaurus and the Minmi, things like that. I mean, it, it's kind of within that, that realm um, of a Jurassic World dinosaur toy. Um, but it looks pretty good. It's got a nice sculpt to it. Uh, there is a pretty big issue with the amount of fingers that it has. It only has three fingers and uh, the species I believe actually had four. So um, kind of a big oversight on Mattel's part. Obviously they're making toys and not scientifically accurate dinosaurs. And uh, I don't think they had any film references to go off of. So this should be a complete like Mattel like thing. Um, so yeah, that's on Mattel, but yeah, what can you do? Um, I really like the texturing on this one. Like if you look here at the skin, you can see all the scales and it's very reptilian and aesthetic, uh, even though it's not a reptile. I mean, it still looks really good. There's a lot of nice texturing going on there. Here at the head, you can see that it is nicely sculpted. It's a little bit shrink wrapped, especially there at the front, but it looks pretty good. Uh, teeth look pretty decent. Uh, they're yellow. The inside of the mouth is pink, almost like a pepto -Bismo pink. And um, yeah, it, it's looking fairly decent. All the legs look good. Looks kind of like it's just like like crawling along. Now I really do like this coloring. It's a very muted sort of uh, teal or minty green. And you can see that it has a very nice fade as you get a little bit closer to the top. Uh, very nice looking. And at the bottom, it's more of this lime green color, at least from the chin, almost to the end of the, of the, uh, the body, torso there. Uh, and then uh, you can see that the coloring continues, uh, you know, this greenish mint uh, sort of color. And that looks really nice. I do like the colors that they applied. Uh, tail looks nice. The sail looks really cool. Uh, it's very thick. Like if you look at it from the side, you can see it's a very thick sail. Um, and that's good because it's more durable. Uh, and you can see it just looks pretty crazy. Like if you get really close to it, <laughs> it starts looking um, pretty crazy. It's basically red and yellow. Um, almost like a gold yellow color and I like that. I mean, I, I think it looks really nice. Um, it, it's interesting. It, it's different. It is unique for this toy line and I'm happy about that. Would it have looked more interesting if they took the Kenner approach and just did flat out Kenner colors? That would have been awesome. Um, maybe they'll do that later, but for now I'm pretty happy with the colors that they went with for this Dimetrodon. Now, as far as articulation goes, we can move each of these limbs. So we have four limbs. You can see that the front ones are on ball joints, so you can move them out. You can rotate them. Uh, it's gonna be the same thing on this side. Um, so that is pretty nice. Now with the back legs, they actually just swivel. Uh, it doesn't even seem like they come out. It seems like they're just on swivels. Um, so, you know, that's fine. Uh, I don't think you really need all that much kind of movement with the Dimetrodon, but um, it is pretty cool that you do have some posability 
there with the creature. All right, so now in terms of the action feature, this is part of the Savage Strike assortment, so we do have a Savage Strike feature. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tail back here and you're going to push it to the side and you can see the Dimetrodon closes its mouth. Release it, it opens it back up. So that is pretty cool. Uh, it's different in the sense that you don't actually push it down. I was a little confused when I got it out of the packaging. I thought you had to push it down, but you just push it to the side and it does that. So um, not the most exciting feature by any means, but it does what it needs to do. So in that sense, it's pretty nice. To give you an idea of size, here is a Dimetrodon with Dr. Alan Grant, and you can see that it scales up pretty nicely to Dr. Grant. I have fond memories of being a kid and not only seeing the Kenner Jurassic Park Dimetrodon in stores, but I remember going to the local zoo and they had the Dynamation robotic dinosaur exhibit and uh, going through with my class, uh, I must have been like in second or third grade, and seeing a skeleton of the Dimetrodon. I'd never seen one in person, but that was my first time actually seeing a skeleton of this creature. And uh, I remember it was big, but it wasn't like dinosaur size big, really. So this looks really good to me. This looks to be a pretty accurate size uh, in comparison to what a human would look like next to a Dimetrodon. All right, so we have our collector card that comes in the packaging. So we can see here, looking at the Dimetrodon, it has a, a little bit above average strength. Uh, its speed is a bit above average, coming in at a seven. Its brains are about a five, so average intelligence. And then its ferocity is a six. So it's gonna be a little bit above average there too. And really nice image there of the Dimetrodon. Really like that artwork. All right, my friends, so there you have it. This is the Mattel Jurassic World Dino Rival Savage Strike Dimetrodon. Overall, you guys, I like this quite a bit. Is it perfect? No. Does it have enough fingers or toes? No. Is the paint a little out of this world? Absolutely, but you know what? These are dinosaur toys, and sometimes that's okay. I do enjoy the sculpt quite a bit. I like that the sail is nice and thick. It's not too flimsy. All the texturing along the body, the scales, that looks great. And they also painted it very well. The joints work quite well. They're a little bit stiff in the front, but they do pose nicely. And the action feature works quite well too. So overall, there's not a whole lot to complain about here. At the $9.99 price point, I think Mattel did a good job delivering. It's a fun toy, it looks good, and it's gonna look pretty good in toy photography. I'm looking forward to getting it outside and getting some photos taken. Overall, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. And again, for the price point, you really can't go wrong adding this to your collection. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Give us a like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below. What's your favorite thing about the Dimetrodon? Be sure you're following on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Special thanks to my Cantina patrons over on Patreon. And as always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Cretaceous Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.